So just for this video, we're going to look at what is a gravitational field. It sounds familiar, but then again, at the same time, it's like not quite familiar. Like, what is this? Uh? So we're going to learn by the end of the video, make sure you know what is the gravitational field, how does force and this field relate. Then we're going to look at this kind of new thing called Newton's Law of Gravitation. Ooh, sounds so funny. So funny. So cool. Newton's Law of Gravitation. Okay, so first things first. Fields. Do you remember fields? What are fields? Okay, we've seen that before in AS. Uh, if you want to say what is a field in general, you can say that it's a region of space where a body or some object with some properties experience a force. What properties? Well, you, can have, you have like what we call electric fields. So in electric fields, your charges... Your charge, sorry. Your charge is the object. The property is like, I guess, a charge, coulomb, okay? So if you have a charge in an electric field, then yeah, it's going to move around because it's a force, electric force acting on it. Then also we've seen before in chapter 5 and as well as chapter 6, if this is, let's say, the ground, this earth, ground. If you put a box way up here, you let go, it's going to go down. Why it goes down? Because there is what we call the weight or what we call the gravitational force. Ooh. And it's, this gravitational force is acting on this box. Why? Because you're in a field. So you look at these two ideas, this field, these lines, these arrows are the fields, field, field. So that's what I mean, field. But now we're going to zoom in a little bit more on just the gravitational part. The electric part, we'll save it for another chapter completely. So gravitational field. Very specifically, for gravitational field only, you can say it's a space where a mass oh, experiences a gravitational force. This mass is a property of your object. Okay, so like we previously, I drew this thing, lah. if you are, this is what we're more used to. You put a ball here, the ball will go down. Why I got weight? Weight is called a gravitational force. This one, Fg. And this is the Earth law, the ground. But if you zoom out a bit, oh, you will see this whole Earth here. And actually, you will have a gravitational field, something like that, pointing to the center of the Earth. If it means that looks like a point charge. Yeah, all is the same thing, no? Except that you can only attract, cannot repel. So, any kind of object, if you put a mass here, test mass, see this small little dot here? It will experience a force towards the center of the Earth. That's a gravitational field. But what is this gravitational force, this Fg? Let's do a thought experiment and try to follow in the footsteps of Newton to come up with this law of gravitation. Okay, just now I say there's two objects. Right? Okay, okay, let's rewind and break it down. Because that one, if you just memorize the definition, you won't understand. So let's go through the explanation of it. Let's say I have two objects here, two spheres. You can see here, one's big, one's small. The first sphere has some mass m1 which is bigger lah. The second mass has some... Second sphere has some mass, M2. Okay, and this is the center of the sphere. Okay. Now, just by having mass, it will attract each other. <gasps> Imagine you and someone you really like floating in space. Eventually, you will have attractive force to each other and you will like... Eventually, you will stick together. Why is that? Ooh, because... You have mass, you have force. What does that mean? Okay, so these two are here. They are at some separation apart, okay, from the center here. We use radius r as the separation distance, okay? And now, here comes the fun part. This first mass on the left side here will exert a force on the one on the right. So, kind of like this. This is the force of number one on number two. Okay, that is the big one pulling the small one. Also, the small one will also pull the big one towards itself. And that is something like this. This is the force of number two pulling on number one. Two forces. So they attract each other. Look, I attract you, you attract me. Boing. They go together like that. Okay. 
So that is Newton's law of gravitation. But we need to come up with an equation, right? Because physics equations. But before that, let's write out some facts about these things here. The first fact, fact number one. Yeah, I'll use blue color. You see these two red arrows, right? This looks familiar. F2 on 1, F1 on 2. Where have you seen this before? Hmm. This is in AS called Newton's Third Law Pairs. So you can say the first fact, both F21, I lazy to write the on la. F21 and F12 are Newton's Third Law Pair. Or what we call the action reaction forces. Action reaction pair. Same type, equal magnitude, opposite direction. Same type, equal magnitude, opposite direction, acting on different bodies. Ah, okay, pass. So these two are the red ones. That's the first fact. The second fact, what else do we know about this thing before we construct our equation? Mm, do you think this thing can repel? Ah? No, it's attracting. Ah. M1, M2 attract. So that's actually true. For all kinds of gravitational forces, you can only attract. So I, I summarize here. F21 and F12 are always attractive. Means there's no repel, repellation, is that a word? Very attractive, wow. Ooh, ooh. Okay, how you know attractive? Because the arrow point to each other, law. I pull you, you pull me. Okay, so that's two facts that we know. Now the third one is where we will come up with the law of gravitation. To do that, I'm going to open up a simulation for us to have a look at that, to come up with the idea. Okay, then here, you see they redraw a moon and an earth. Oh, very nice. They also give us the, the chance to change the size of the planet, size of the moon, and distance of the separation. How far are they apart? And you see down here, right, there's Fg and Fg, that's the gravitational force. Okay, so the goal is, what variables affect the gravitational force? Okay, how do you know that? You look at the arrow, the size of the arrow, no? the blue and the red. If they're very far apart, look at the arrow, very small, no? see? But if you put them closer, the distance of separation is closer. Oh, look at that, the arrow becomes so big. Hmm... That gives me an idea that the force is related to this separation somehow. When the separation is big, force is small. Hmm, okay, so think, keep in mind, separation is a factor there. Then you have the mass of the moon and mass of the planet. Let's say I make the moon mass very, very, very high. Wow, you see the arrow become big. Okay. So something about the mass of the moon affects this gravitational force between these two. And the planet also, if you can change that, ooh, that also changes. Hmm. So you got mass of this first planet, mass of that second planet, and you have the distance separation. How do we tie them all together in an equation? So Newton sat down and thought about it. He said, mm, all right, we got mass as a factor, both masses and R. So he did some experiments, some thought processes, and he came to the conclusion that the gravitational force, F21 or F12, either one, is proportional to the masses and their separation distance. Okay, M1 is the mass of the first, M2 mass of second. And that's what the sentence we saw just now is talking about. If we translate that Equation, the relationship that we saw just now, into a sen uh, English sentence like this one here. Then we get our A-levels definition. Ah, this one you must remember. Okay, so the attractive force, uh, gravitational is uh, attractive force, gravitational force, between two point masses, okay, the two stuff we look at, is directly proportional to the product of the two masses. Well, M1, M2, and inversely, or okay, it's directly inversely proportional to the square of separation. That's the whole definition, the full one. Mark schemes, you see, sometimes may be a little bit different. They may only include two points out of this, but the fullest one you can write is this one above. Alright, so make sure you keep that in mind, how to remember that. Anyway, so we got that relationship already. If we turn it into an equation, we can use it to calculate forces between two masses. Now, if we 
change a proportional relationship to an equal equation, then you must include a constant. So people did experiments and they found a constant g. m1, m2, two masses over r squared. Their separation. Ah, this one is the equation that we'll be using to calculate stuff and all kinds of other stuff. Well, anyway, so what is the union of this thing? You don't panic now, you see so many things. It's still force. So your unit is still Newton. And of course, a force is a vector. Force this way, force that way, force up, force down. Okay, all kinds of stuff. Now, let me just uh, recap a little bit to remind you what this G is. We call it the gravitational constant. You can find this in your uh, every exam paper at the beginning or a long list of constants. It's in there. And the value is a very, very small value. 6.67 times 10, negative 11. And the units, we calculate the units from the force, the mass, and the r. And we will get Newton meter square kg minus 2. That is the constant. You can also find it in the calculator if you know how to find the constant of g inside here. One last thing I would like to highlight to you is the word they use. Point masses. Masses. Why they say point masses? Obviously, it's like Earth, Moon, Mars, it's round shaped sphere. But why they call it a point? Ah. That's from this idea right here. If your sphere, like, well, Give me a second. If your sphere has uniformly distributed mass, so you say the mass is spread evenly la, throughout the whole sphere, then you can say it behaves as a point mass. So, okay, no? Just one point mass like that, concentrated at the center, all the mass concentrated at the center. So that's why, although the Earth and the Moon is like a circle, we just look at a point and a point and we say, oh, what's the difference between them? Point mass, okay? So remember this definition, that is Newton's law of gravitation.